Uh, hello viewers, I am uh, Dr. Prabhat Reddy Lakiretti. I am a director of orthopedics at uh, this excellent Erit Hospitals uh, situated in Gachiboli. As a part of our uh, discussion, we are talking about creating awareness about uh, shoulder instability or shoulder dislocations. So coming to what is shoulder instability or shoulder dislocation. Most of the times the shoulder dislocation or shoulder instability occurs in young patients in under their 40s uh, in the prime active age group and this occurs because of uh, sports mostly because of sports injuries sometimes because of uh, fall from the bike or fall from an outstretched hand causing shoulder dislocation so the shoulder joint actually comes out of the socket so that is called shoulder instability and once the shoulder dislocates majority of the patients need to go to the hospital for the shoulder to be reduced into position under anesthesia but what we are seeing nowadays is because of the less violent injuries most of the patients are having a partial shoulder dislocation means shoulder partially comes out of the socket and with some help, it just goes back in. But you should understand when the shoulder partially dislocates or fully dislocate, it is coming, it is tearing the labrum, which is a supporting structure in the front of the shoulder, and ball is coming out of it. So that's why it, that, and that labrum is called a labral tear, and this labral tear doesn't heal on its own. That's why most of the shoulder dislocation or shoulder instability is need surgical intervention in the form of arthroscopic uh, uh, stabilization or arthroscopic uh, labral repair. Now, why do we need to operate this uh, shoulder instability? Some of the patients don't dislocate. They just have complaints of instability. So what happens is they carry on with their daily activities. So with every normal movement of the shoulder, because the ball is not supported by the labrum in the front because of the tear, ball keeps on jerking with every activities. When the ball keep jerking, again like the knee ACL tears, there is a leads to long term uh, arthritis in the joint. Because the ball is not situated in the socket, ball when it is not supported in the front, it leads to migration forward. So, so it keeps on uh, rubbing against the socket leading to arthritis in about two to four years. And second reason why it doesn't heal is there's no blood circulation around the ligaments like your knee ligaments, shoulder ligaments, any joint ligament don't have blood circulation on their own. So when they're torn, they remain tear, torn and which leads to either increase in the tear or leads to arthritis in the long run. How do we diagnose this uh, shoulder instability? First thing when you have a shoulder instability, either because of first injury or a second injury, you should visit in a good orthopedic surgeon who will do a clinical assessment. We have apprehension test, we have several tests we can perform to assess the instability and we diagnose by doing uh, investigations like MRI scan and X-ray to find out the size of the labral tear. Usually we talk in terms of clock, the labral tear starts from about one o'clock, we take a, a clock phase, it starts from one o'clock position and extend up to five or six o'clock position. So we diagnose that on the MR scan. And the treatment, coming to treatment of the labral repair, depending on the size of the labral injury. If the size is less than one centimeters, we do not need to operate, but that whole labral tear of one centimeter has to be closed by giving regenerative therapy of platelet-rich plasma. Now coming to tears which are bigger in size, how we traditionally used to be done as an open procedure. Now we have abandoned doing open procedures more than 20 years now. So all we do is an arthroscope, which is a keyhole surgery to repair the labrum back into the bone. Originally we were using metal sutures, then we were using biodissolvable anchors, then knots, all these have gone now. And we developed one of the best techniques, which is called as a fail proof uh, technique to using a knotless uh, sutures uh, and with a biodissolvable anchors. What we've seen is with this uh, arthroscopic procedure and using a knotless technique, the procedure is more accurate, more predictable results with very, very, very less uh, re tear or re failure rates. The advantage of this uh, fail-proof technique of shoulder repair or go back to sports at a very early stage. 
the normal after surgery protocol is if we protect the shoulder for about three four weeks and after four weeks we start uh, advise them to start using the using the shoulder actively and from about six weeks we start doing weight training with one kg weight and getting full range almost full range of motions and from three months onwards we tell them to do heavy weight training and start practicing to return to sport then depending on the profession or the sports what they're doing we either push them to start playing sports early if somebody is not a professional player then we advise them to go slow gradually build the shoulder muscles and tell them to return to sports in about four to six months time but if somebody is a very professional once you go back to playing uh, uh, badminton or tennis uh, these things then we have intensive physiotherapy protocol so where we can put them back into sports in about three to four months time and uh, to summarize this uh, fail proof uh, surgery using uh, knotless anchors for shoulder instability as shown in our hands uh, to be one of the best technique as we have done about 1200 surgeries and we have seen hardly any re re dislocations or re tears i only advise is try to not ignore these things get seen by the orthopedic surgeon get properly investigated and try to understand patients should try to understand what kind of tear they have looking at the mri and then decide on the appropriate treatment and so finally conclude for fail professional reconstruction is the best most innovative advanced technique in for shoulder repair thank you